All right, hello everybody again. Welcome to short evaluations of real websites. My name is Kyla Hunt. I'm going to be your facilitator today, and I do work with TechSoup Global. With me today are Suzanne Hempel and Steve Williams, both from SAP. Uh, Susanna, could you take a moment and introduce yourself briefly? Hi, uh, my name is Susanna, and I work for SAP as in the translation team, so I'm responsible for quality of the uh, German user interface and documentation. Okay, great. Thank you, Susanna. And Steve, could you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hey, my name is Steve Williams. I'm Director of Corporate Social, Responsi Social Responsibility for SAP, and I manage our global technology donation program, uh, partnering very much with tech. I believe we're active right now in 18 countries around the world, making a lot of our financial reporting and database reporting and analytics software available to nonprofits. So I spend a lot of time working with organizations about how to use information uh, to do storytelling, and I'm uh, really interested to share some of that knowledge with uh, on, on the website uh, content today. Okay, awesome. Thank you. And then also assisting with chat today is Kevin Lowe from TechSoup, and so if you see his name pop up into the chat when you ask a question, that um, that's who that is. So everybody say hi to Kevin in the chat pane. <laughs> a little bit about today's agenda. This is going to be a little bit different than the TechSoup events in the past in that we are going to be taking a look at four different organizations' websites um, in about eight to ten minutes each. The first organization that we're going to be looking at will be Family and Children's Services, and I do want to thank um, the representative from that organization, Mary Ann McLaughlin. So thank you, Mary Ann, for volunteering your website to be looked at today. Uh, then next up, we're going to be looking at some Memorial Library's website, and thank you to Andrew Sherman for, <laughs> for agreeing to allow us to look at your website. Um, Third, we're going to be taking a look at the Rio Bravo Wildlife Institute's website, and I do want to thank Carol Sebastian. And finally, we're going to end up looking at DFW Wildlife Coalition's website, and a big thank you to Kathy. I believe this is Malachek, and Kathy, I do apologize if I just completely <laughs> mispronounced your name. But again, a big thank you to all these organizations for allowing us to look at your websites today. Um, any questions that you have regarding anything that's said about your website, uh, feel free to email me after, after the fact, and I will be sending a follow-up email to you all. So for each of these websites, we're going to be thinking about a few different questions. Uh, for example, does the website accurately reflect the mission of the organization? So do you know what that organization is about by looking at the website? We'll be looking at some navigation um, features. We're going to be thinking about the original content from the websites. We're going to be thinking about how searchable that site is. And finally, we're going to be thinking about if it's easy for a visitor or supporter to become a part of that community. And so with that, I do want to give, give presenter control to Susanna, who's going to be taking us through the first website, Family and Children's Services. Um, just one note is that we, we are going to be taking a look at these websites for about eight to ten minutes each. So Susanna, if we, once we start approaching the ten minute mark, I probably will kind of interject and say that um, we should probably have some follow-up, some, some closing statements about that website. So take it away. Thanks, uh, thanks, Kyla. And I'll keep the time in mind. Uh, OK, so I'll get started. Um, in order to answer the questions, um, I think the navigation of this website is uh, really well. There is, um, you, um, I, I had no problem of finding my way through it. It's uh, well structured, so we have those four buttons up here, and then we have uh, buttons below. What I would suggest, though, is since w it, it seems to be a double navigation, so I have the structure here, and then also I'm um, I'm located on the very first intro page, and then I have a similar structure here. And the question is, is that extra layer needed, 
or are these buttons here enough? Because it um, requires me to click one more um, layer, through one more layer. Um, however, it's, uh, it's quite easy to navigate through it. Um, I couldn't find a search. Um, there seems to be no search available. So if I, for instance, wanted to search uh, the program, um, I have to navigate through it myself. So that could also be an improvement suggestion. Um, I noticed there were a few typos. Since I'm from a, I have a language background, I am looking for that. And uh, there was in the FAQs, I think under news and events, how to help. Sorry, there was an FAQ section, and there were a few typos. So um, reviewing the website from a linguistic point of view is probably a good idea. Um, I would probably place the uh, um, social media icons somewhere up higher, on a higher level, uh, maybe on the side, so people can use that right away, click on it right away. Right now it's hidden under news events in the media kit. It may not be obvious for a first time user. And um, also the events that are available are also somewhere hidden. I have to know that events will sit in news and events and it takes me to click to click through the events. It would be good to have them at the entry point of the website because that is also a way of uh, getting people engaged by inviting them to events. Um, I got a little bit lost on the donate website where I clicked through and once I'm at a very low level, there was no way to get me back up to donate other than using the back button to go back to that um, website where I have laid out all sorts of um, ways to give. And I think that is about it from my side, okay. what I have to yeah. say. Yeah, I, I, had a, I had a couple of uh, comments as well sort of on a similar kind of side, um, but, but I guess I, I was kind of looking at the stated intent that we got from Marianne was around attracting new patrons or new constituents. So if you could just go back to the front of the home page then, is that if our goal is really to attract new people and to get new constituents part of the, part of the process, then we really want to make it very obvious in terms of what specifically do we want them to do. Are we inviting them to join? Are we inviting them to show up to an event? Uh, would we like them to donate? Would we like them to volunteer? And all of those options are available on the site. But I think one of the key things for me would do, be to really identify what is the key call to action that you want to have happen and be very clear on the audience that, that you're reaching and making sure, making sure that's very obvious. So if the goal is really to attract new, then there should be somewhere that says uh, join us or connect um, or become a member or something like that very prominent. I think the, the other thing that would be really useful there is that there's some great content in the spotlights that are kind of scattered around the site. There's some great quotes and some great stories of organizations and people that have been participating in the site and participating in the program. I would like to see that more highly visible because people really resonate with stories. It's great to have the program descriptions and we do need to have that, but people really do want to be able to uh, see, uh, to see what that looks like and, and to really um, make, make a change on that. Um, the other thing that I think would be interesting is really for an organization like this that delivers lots of programs and has lots of different things going on, it can be challenging to really have a focus and really help people understand what is the impact of what you do. So I think having a, uh, a way that would show the, the impact of, of what your donations have been and impact of what the volunteers are really why, why has it made a difference or uh, that, that you've been uh, in, in existence, what impact you've made on the community, and then that helps to draw people in because they can see, okay, well, if I do this, then, then what might be the impact of me uh, being able to contribute? So those were, those were some of the highlights that I had. 
Um, but the, the actual, you know, the, the, some of the design is quite clean. I, I would definitely echo Susanna on making the social media more of a prominent component because if we're really looking at people to join that community and, and to make some of those things um, easy to, to, to get up, and we want to make that as, as simple as possible for, for, for the people who visit the site. Okay, great. Um, and, and before I, because I have a couple of questions of my own, and um, I know that we've been asked if we can make the font a little bit bigger on the on this site. So Susanna, if you hit Control plus plus, that might make this a little bit bigger, um, simply so we can see it a little bit larger. Um, Is it better now? It looks a little bit better. It got a little bit better. Oh, um, even more. Um, I saw that I saw that it expanded one time. Oh yeah, that looks even better. So if anybody still needs, yep, that's perfect. That sounds great. Um, so I, I was really interested to to hear both you and uh, Steve talk about the the need to increase the the visibility of the social media. Um, so how hot, like how prominent would you recommend something like that be? Would that be would you recommend that to be like on the upper right section of a main home page or on every page or or what are you thinking would be an ideal visibility for that? If you ask me, um, you have those shortcuts here on the right hand side and why not place them below? I think there's only three. You guys only have Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. So it would just be those three icons could be as a fixed area below, mm -hmm. and they just don't move. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would definitely recommend that having that on every page. And then in terms of the front page, definitely have it prominent. But but I would come back to really before making that decision, focus on what is the what's the one thing that we want people to happen to, to, to do on that front page? Do we want them to click the donate button? Do we want them to join us to be a volunteer, or do we want them to sign up and be a member of our community? And, and it's all, this, this is one of the most challenging things with this website design, because if the answer is we want them to do all three, that's great, but the more options we give people, the more kind of confusing it gets for them. So we really need to just have what, what's that one number one, and that, that could rotate. You may have sort of some months that are focused on donations, some that are focused on engaging people, but I think to me, that's, that's the biggest thing. Be very clear on what's the number one goal of that site. Right. So it's just it's just a matter of clarifying, so people don't get a little, like uh, sidetracked. And the number one goal is is look is kind of swept aside. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. I mean, it's a, the stated goal from the site was attracting new patrons or constituents. So is social media the best way to do that? Um, I, I'm not sure. I'd, I'd have to defer to, to, to Marianne and, and team for, for that in terms of how to engage people. But certainly telling the stories and so on and, and building that community is going to be important. Okay, great. Taking a look at the questions that are coming in, and if anybody has any questions, please type them into the questions pane. There's one, I'm not sure um, if this is just about this site or if about websites in general, but there's a question that came in from Lisa asking, is it important to include an updated copyright at the bottom, so I guess at the bottom of a website, um, do, does that ne copyright need to be updated yearly? Um, yeah, generally I, I would suggest that it is. I mean, if, you, if you're creating your own content, I think it's, it's important to have that so people can, can recognize that. Um, but, but I mean, realistically, you sort of have to look at like how much of what you're creating is really sort of needing a, a copyright and how much you actually just want widely shared, but, it, but it's certainly good to have that so you can have the attribution on your site. Okay, great. Um, Stephanie also has asked if when looking at these sites, if you had thought of accessibility compliance at all or if you had any thoughts about, about um, that particular issue with this site in particular and I guess with all the sites we're going to be looking at today. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that's a great point. I, mean, I, I did not actually really take that too much into account when I, when I was doing my evaluation, which is really quite a, an oversight, really. Um, I think that uh, I mean, the accessibility is an important thing to be thinking about. Right? I mean, it's, it's, it's tempting to really have nice sort of flash faces and all kinds of really interesting, cool visuals and everything. But realistically, having that available for, for screen readers is, is important. Um, 
one way that I've seen that is that, uh, and one thing that actually helps is, in addition to accessibility um, from, from a screen reader side, there's also the issue of accessibility of device, like whether this is accessible through mobile devices. And you can actually get a double benefit there because when you're, if you're doing a version of the site, for example, that would work well in a mobile browser, or, 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 or then, then there's, that's much more likely to be uh, easily accessible for, for someone who has uh, visual issues or, 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 uh, or auditory issues as well. So it, it, it's definitely a good thing to keep in mind if at all possible to make the default site work. Uh, and if that's not possible to have a parallel site that could also be repurposed for mobile. Okay, great. And that, and we actually just got a question about mobile site development. Um, Ed's wondering just how important it is right now to, and, I, and Ed, if you could clarify the question just a little bit. Um, he asked mobile site development, how important is it? And so I don't know if either of you want to speak to that just a little bit. Well, I, mean, I, I, I would come back again to the audience, right? Is, is that it, it's very difficult to answer that question in general. Um, but I mean, if, if we look at this, if we look at this site specifically. So, if if the goal of the site is to add new patrons and, and new constituents and, and engage more people in connecting to to, to the to the to the site and to, to the services, then I would ask the question: Are those new constituents, are people that are wanting to engage with this, are they using mobile devices? And it may be the case that that they are and, and, and may want to, for example, have um, an SMS-based system where they could be alerted to uh, new services being offered or, or new events and so on, um, or, or, or something that could be accessible through a mobile device or maybe understanding having a map-based application that show where, the, where different uh, food banks and community services are. Those are all interesting, but I would really start before developing that and, and really understanding who is your audience, and, and what are you trying to deliver to them before you develop that, that mobile application, um, and, and really make sure that it's right for your audience. Okay, great. So it's really just a matter of thinking about thinking thinking about the importance of of um, who you're trying to reach and who your your constituent or donor base is. Um, and so I think that goes back to yeah, the and, idea and, and of that, knowing what you're doing on, or with the mission. And so that, that's going to be a point that I come back to for, for, all, for feedback on all of the websites, really, because it's just such a critical thing that, uh, that we have to think about the audience first. Um, what kind of languages do they speak? What words do they use? Uh, what resonates with them? What kind of technology do they use? Um, are they familiar with the organization? Are they are they or, or are they brand new? Really thinking through who are the people that are going to be coming to your site and and, and designing it that way. So really starting with the user first. And then, and then building the design around that, where a lot of technology, and, and ourselves included, and myself included, working in a soft, software company for over 20 years, it's really easy to build the technology first and then push it out to the end users. But that, that almost, almost never really works out successfully, really to understand what people are looking for and then build it to, to match their needs. Okay, great. Um, with that, any other questions that have come in, I will try to get to in the next at the end of the next um, website. So, Susanna, why don't you go ahead and give the control to Steve, and we will go ahead and take a look at the next website. Okay, great. And I believe the, uh, this is going to be Sub Memorial right. Library. Right. Yep. Yep. Looks great. Okay. Let me uh, make that to a full screen view so you can see this. Mm -hmm. Great. So I, I think for, for, so. For my feedback on this, I would really kind of pick up on the, the, the comments that I was just making earlier. That um, around who is that audience and, and, and how do we get people engaged? So the stated goal of this site was really to be informational. So we do have a lot of that information. I mean, one of the it is going to sort of have when it's going to be open and closed. Uh, the hours of the organization, uh, calendar uh, calendar of, of events. Uh, we've got a lot of the information is really quite easy to find. But the first first thing that I kind of thought was, well, are, are we, what are we really trying to accomplish with this? Are we trying to look at existing patrons of the library and get them to increase their usage and, and understand what else is involved and, and what's going on there so they can use that more? Or is it around uh, reaching people that are brand new and that have never come to this Sun Memorial Library before and getting them to engage in uh, understanding what's happening. So I think there's, there's a couple of things that, 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 that we can work with here. 
So first of all, there is one uh, around the, the uh, getting involved uh, piece, this, this idea of the friends of the, the, the library. I think this is really an interesting concept. I'm not sure how big this, this section is here, but there's some membership and benefit things that, that could really have here that people can, can really get involved in making the library their own. I think this is something that I would really look at moving more prominently onto the home page. And, and once again, it, it's up here in the navigation bar, but putting that right onto the home page so that people can see that. There was also a, uh, I can't even actually find it right now, so maybe it's, um, maybe it was kind of buried somewhere, but there, there's a calculator that actually showed the, the value that you would get by going into a library. Um, and how much money you would actually save. Well, here it is right here. It's calculator to see how much money you, you, you can save by going to the public library. And I thought this was a really interesting way of engaging and a very interactive thing. That's something that I'd really recommend making use of. So here you can say, well, if I borrow, uh, say, 10, uh, uh, 10 hardcover books a year, and I borrow uh, five books a year for my kids, uh, and I read uh, 15 magazines, then I can see that over the year, that's actually given me a value of $330 by, by, it's by getting those services from the library. So I think that's something that can really be valuable to engage people and get them to see the, the value of what's happening. So I'd make some of those interactive pieces and ways that people that are not just seeing information but actually can use this to make decisions and, and engage with the site be, being very important. Um, the overall, the, the content is generally good. I think I would look at cleaning it up a little bit. So right here, just on this side here, we see uh, multiple different colors. And we've got bold and italic and regular. We've got black and we've got blue. There's a lot of different uh, uh, sort of fonts here. I would I really make that a lot cleaner. And on this links here, uh, there's also this content is good, but I'll also look at cleaning that up on just in terms of aligning the text and, and, and the graphics and so on. Make sure that we have a Facebook link here, but also make that more of a general uh, social media links would include other uh, other pieces. Um, and then events. This is the, the calendar. This is also something that I think would be good to potentially have like an events bar down the side or something because one of the real things is that libraries can become central to communities. They can really become a gathering place, a meeting place, not just for books but for community events and political engagements and learning and, 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 and community sharing, all kinds of different things. So focusing on um, what that uh, what that really means, potentially playing off this slogan here, we're a Papillon's public library, and really expanding the definition of what what public means, uh, and, and, and making some of those uh, make some of those things visible. Because I think there's a lot of great things that the organization is doing that that, that could be made more visible. So that, that was my feedback, and Suzanne, I, I know you had to, had some comments as well. Um, hold on, I'm just going through it. I didn't have that many comments that you haven't covered yet uh, for the library. I think you covered most of it already. Uh, maybe one suggestion was there are there is a calendar, there are services, adults, children, they all more or less cover a similar thing. Uh, so I would structure it more from a point that you have a calendar of events and then for adults and for ch children to make it a more um, more structured, um, rather than having a horizontal bar of all these buttons next to each other, that may increase interactivity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's a good point. I mean, I think all the content is here, uh, but it, 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 there's multiple ways to get to it. It may be a little bit confusing in terms of how to find a specific program. Whether you go into services or children or calendar, it may show up in all three places. So it may be better just to help guide people uh, through that in terms of if they really know how to find what they're looking for. That's really interesting to me um, because I, I actually come from a library background and you know over and over again I always hear to to make that uh, events calendar available so people know what's going on at your library but really to think about how you're presenting that those events and not it's not just a matter of putting up a calendar and if you're making the information available then you're done but to actually consciously think about how you're displaying it I think that's a really really good takeaway from this mm -hmm. um, 
taking a look at some of the questions that have been coming in, uh, Larry asks, did I hear you say that multiple colored fonts on one page is not a good idea for separation of paragraphs? Um, for, for, from my, I mean, in, in my opinion, it's, I, I like having things consistent. I mean, you can do, so, so here, like using this as an example here, um, if, if you're going to make things different and you're going to use different colors or different fonts, you really want to make them different. So for here, for example, we've got a welcome with, uh, in, in one font and then everything else is in a different font. And then we've also got colors and we've uh, colored here and we've got black and white here. So the way it's used here, it's not really immediately clear why this sentence is in blue and this one is in black and why this sentence is in blue and this one is in black. Um, it, 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 so color can be used effectively, but I think you really, you really want to make sure that it's, you're, you're literally blocking that out. So if these were, if, if these are actually specific different types of content that really need to be highlighted, then I would perhaps like use that with blue, but also put a, uh, a background call out or maybe move that into a highlight or a special notice box or something like that. And similar with this one here, this, this also seems to be this blue and this blue, they, they seem to be uh, notices, like kind of late breaking news almost. And if that's the case, then I would actually put them in a section called late breaking news or up, updates or something like that, just so it's really clear um, what, what, why you're using that differentiation. So I'm not, I don't mean to say you should never use color, but just making sure you're using that really clearly to differentiate uh, the different sections. Yeah, and Andrew, um, Andrew from Sump Memorial Library actually just typed in saying that the color of the text was meant to be alerting, otherwise everything would be in black. Um, but you're, by, from what I understand is that you're saying that it's fine to, to do something like that to alert, but maybe color differentiation isn't the best way to go about it. Yeah, or, or, or if you're going to do color differentiation, then, then make it really set and have, for example, like a box here that's got a yellow background and text on it or, or, or something to, to really make it separate. Because uh -huh. uh, I think when people are looking at a site, if they see something that's just a little bit different, they don't necessarily see it as, as being really different. Like we, we need to really, from, from a pure design point of view, you really need to make a, a, a big contrast uh, from one thing to the next. Otherwise, people don't really see it as, as a big difference. Okay, great. Yeah, and Stephanie actually also pointed out that when she sees blue font, that to her says link, and then she tries to click mm -hmm. on it. So maybe um, just the fact that it's blue in of itself is a little um, disconcerting to some people. Um, let me take a look to see if there are what other questions have come in. While I'm doing that, I know there was a question from the last section about um, site maps and how important those are to a website. Do you have an opinion on that, either Steve or Susanna? So do you mean in terms of making a site map visible so everybody can see the navigation at a glance? Uh-huh, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I think people do need to understand how to get to where they're looking. And and this, this also comes down to, uh, once again, to the back of the audience is that different people may be navigating things in different ways. So for example, if I'm a new parent and, and, or, or a parent with a small kids and I just moved to this neighborhood, I may be coming in looking for, for one specific thing on, on, on children's programming. If I'm a recently retired senior or if I'm actually trying to organize an event, I may be looking for different things. So the site map is important, but you can also sort of have sort of different entry points and you may want to have um, rather than up here, like a lot of different buttons for different things, really focus on what are the types of tasks and some of the, something that we want to accomplish from coming to the site and giving that as a very prominent entry point and letting people enter the site from there. Okay, great. Um, Adam asks, is there a best practice in terms of the number of menu items across the top from which to select? Um, the best practice in terms of number of menu is, um, I, I don't necessarily have a, a, a real best practice, but uh, I mean, I, I, I tend to prefer sort of um, less, like five or six, seven or less, uh, just so that people can mentally kind of hold in their heads really what they're looking at all in one glance. Great. 
Um, Susanna, did you have any kind of best practices when it comes to that? To that? I would agree with uh, what Steve said. Uh, think about what is being presented and what can be grouped together and what makes sense to the audience to be grouped together. So what is it, who we are, what do we do, and uh, what do we offer, and how can you contribute? Maybe these are, what are the focus areas of the websites, and then go from there and make it uh, intuitive for the user so that they know where to click and keep the different users, as uh, Steve pointed out, uh, in mind. How would they find their entry points? But definitely, I also suggest to have uh, less items. Um, at the horizontal bar. Okay, great. Thank you, Susanna. Just a couple of more questions before we go on to the next website. And I do want to reiterate to the audience that if for some reason we don't get to your to your question, um, you can go ahead and email me and I can forward it to the presenters and I can put my email in the chat pane um, in just a moment. We are going to try to get to as many questions as possible, but I did want to throw that out there. Um, so, Steve and Susanna, can you, this is just a general question, can you change the social media icons to match a specific website? For example, um, change the square around the Facebook icon to an outline of a hand. Do you, do you know if that kind, of, um, that, ki that kind of specification of these icons is doable or is it even preferable? Well, I, I, there's a couple of things. I mean, w when you go to the different sites, they'll usually have like a, a range of icons that you can choose. So there is a little bit of flexibility. But but in general, I'd recommend not getting too much of that because that like that Facebook icon that, that's very recognizable, and the Twitter icon is very recognizable. So if you customize it too much, you, you kind of start to defeat the purpose of having the icons because you can uh, because people won't really understand what that looks like. Um, but but usually there's uh, for, for those kind of sites, there, there's multiple options that you can choose from in terms of what you want to actually embed on your site. So you can customize a little bit, but I'd recommend not doing too much. Okay, great. And Carrie asks, do you think there are too many exclamation points? And she says she's asking because she tends to use them a lot, and she wonders if that's off-putting. <laughs> yes, I mean, because exclamation points mean we're saying something exciting, and we're doing something exciting again. So yes, it's uh, generally I, I would like to look, look to minimize the the the, the, the amount of that. Um, the the exception that I would say is depending on on, on the style of the website and what you're going to, trying to get across. If you're trying, if you're specifically trying to design a very conversational, very casual uh, uh, sort of a site where it's really almost like a friend to friend kind of relationship then you can be a little bit more loose in, in, in how, you, how you do those kind of things. But if you want something that's going to be definitely sort of more speaking to the general public and be more something that sounds more credible and more authoritative, then you, you want to minimize that and, and look at kind of the language and the way you're, you're using those things. OK, great. Thank you. And with that, I think that it's time to move on to our third website. Um, so Steve, if you can give control to Susanna. And we'll take a look at the Rio Bravo okay. Wildlife Institute. Yeah. And again, I do want to thank the Sun Memorial Library for allowing us to take a look at their website. I really do appreciate that. So thank you, Andrew. OK, so I'm taking over. Um, can you see my screen? I can. Yes, you can. OK. So this is the Wildlife Institute, and uh, what I noticed right away is when I was looking at it is a lot of text, lots of information and uh, presented, which is great. However, I would definitely look at what kind of information is uh, being uh, presented and whether it can be condensed. I find myself uh, being a lot in the internet. I surf a lot, but uh, I don't necessarily read long articles. Um, so um, if you want to uh, rework this website, definitely look at uh, what are you saying and whether or not it can be condensed, uh, whether or not it is something that is true information that the user needs to know, or whether it is just a filling sentence that does not, that only carries small information and can be removed. So the less text, the better, I find. Um, as you can see also, there are typos. 
and that usually puts me off as a user, so definitely also do a spell checker um, for the website. That would help. Um, it, um, so the website was very interesting. It, it contained a lot of information. Um, however, I would also change the quality of the pictures. They look very outdated. So if you either can get a higher resolution or a different quality of the pictures, that would be great. Otherwise, just judging from the pictures, I would think also I somehow associate pictures with the quality of the information. And I would think, oh, if the pictures are outdated, what about the information? And um, so uh, the website is very structured. Uh, as you can see, you have all these drop-down lists, and it makes sense, um, the drop-down lists, um, where they sit. Um, however, I was wondering, what is the difference between a program, a project, and events? And also, when I click on events, it's somehow talking about past events, or it is not clear to me as a user whether these events happened or are going to happen, especially the first one. I think it brings up a calendar if I'm... So here, okay, I see pictures, so probably that has already taken place, but adding uh, the, the year make, makes it clear for the user, okay, this event already happened and there's nothing I can, I can join anymore. Um, what else? I am not so sure about this term. I tried to look it up, um, what it means. Mm, I, I was not clear exactly about this word. I hadn't heard it before, and I asked a couple of people. They didn't know, and I searched at Google it. I couldn't find more information on it. So, um, so that I, I thought that was a bit... So I think what I'm hearing from you, Susanna, in this is it's a it's kind of a theme of just being clear in the language that's being used and to think about maybe terms that the organization uses internally and to try to clarify that for somebody who might just be visiting. I guess that also what uh, Steve uh, brought up um, in the beginning to say, okay, so who is the audience? How well educated are they? Maybe they already know everything. They they know that word, and if not, um, is it doesn't make sense to use words like this, or shall we use a clearer language? Yeah, it depends on who is the user. Who who do you want to attract through your website? And yeah, do you want to inform people, or do you want to describe what you do in easy words? Um, it really depends what the website wants to achieve. Um, if I want to donate, which probably is one of the aims of the website, um, hold on, if I come from the Urban Ecology Center, um, it would be nice if that was linked to the actual donation. So I've read all this. I came to this part, and it says give today. And yes, you convinced me I want to donate, but there's nothing. It would be nice to link this. So I can just click it, and uh, we'll be able to, to donate money right away from here. So linking the uh, websites with each other for fast uh, access would also be, uh, uh, I would recommend that. Mm. Yeah, I, think I, I would echo Susanna on, on, on her points. I think uh, th thinking back to the, to the uh, Sampa Memorial Library example, having a calendar of, of, of these events, because when you look at the main page and, and there's all those things, all those uh, events and things coming up, having an easy way to, to find that would, would be really helpful. Um, I think a, a really big opportunity here is that if the stated goal that we saw is, is around attracting new people and new constituents, there's actually quite a range of ways that people can do that. You've got the ability to join a mailing list, you've got Donate Today, you've got Volunteer, and you've got Employment Opportunities, and you've got the project. So what I would do is, is look at, is there a way that we can really make that higher priorities like, and, and more prominent? So for example, we've got right now on the main page already, it says, and actually on all the pages, to join our mailing list and please donate today. And, and those, are, those are specific calls to action but it doesn't really say like why you would join your mailing list, like like what you actually get. Um, and please donate today. 
It doesn't say necessarily say why you're doing that or this is this general or is it for a specific project. So I, I think I, I would look at can you, if, if the goal of the site is to attract and engage new people, is that really, is the drive to get more people onto the mailing list or to, to get more people on your social media list or to raise more uh, dollars or to get more volunteers out to your event. And, and, and all four of those are, 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 I think, definitely doable considering the quality of the content and some of the, the, the work that's being done. But doing, trying to do all of that at the same time uh, can be challenging. So I think there, I, I would see two directions that could be possible. One is to really focus on specifically one of those at a time and say we're, right now we're just focusing on messaging or, or communications or we're just focusing on volunteers or we're just focusing on donations. That's one approach. The other approach would be to really make the whole engagement itself really the, the main goal of the site. So to, to have that rather than just being two boxes on the side, perhaps a banner or a box that goes all across the top that, that really says, um, and engage with us or join us or connect with us and with, with like four buttons of volunteer, maybe just three buttons, volunteer, share, and, and donate. And that's three things that people can do and make it really quite, quite, quite obvious where, where they would go. Um, the, the other thing that I would add that is a good opportunity here is to start to more prominently talk about the impact of what's happening. Because the, the, when you look at what, what's been going on, there's tons of events, there's tons of programs, the, the organization's been in, in existence for a while, but if, if I'm coming in here and I want to kind of assess the credibility, I want to know, so what has the organization done? Is that measured in um, acres of wildlife preserved, or number of animals, or number of children educated, or num uh, uh, tons of CO2 uh, averted from the, your uh, remediation project, or uh, millions of gallons of water claimed, or like, like, what are some of those numbers that you can highlight and make really prominent so people really see uh, the the impact and the value of the organization? So, so those are a couple things that I'd add to to present comments. Right, and so I mean, I think again, what I keep hearing just over and over is to be really clear in your goals and to be really clear in when creating a website to for people visiting the website to know what to do and to really feel like they know what the purpose of the website is and what the purpose of the organization is. And it feels like it just keeps coming back to that central theme. Um, one thing that yeah, I really like... And, and I, yeah, I, I actually did want to highlight and, and, and also to express my appreciation for everyone that, that put forward their website and, and, and listening to this critique because I know it, it's very easy for us to rattle, rattle off all these things and it, it, it's hard to actually put into practice. But, but really that that idea of being clear with the audience, being very focused, that's a challenge that, that not only nonprofit websites face, but the vast majority of websites out there. Like even a lot of corporate sites, you, go, you have no idea what the company does, what they sell while you're there, and, and you just don't really interact with it. So it's, uh, the, 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 the good thing about that is that these are really not technical challenges. These are challenges around understanding your organization, understanding your constituents and what you want to achieve, and then that can be, then you can use the technology to put that into practice. Okay, great. Um, I do want to ask one question before, at least one question before we move on to the next website, but I do want to make sure that we have time for the last website. Um, Juanita asks, regarding Susanna's comment about condensing text, would this organization's quality and depth of work still come through if they used more bulleted listings to convey information? So I guess the question is, um, by condensing the text, um, do you think that that would kind of uh, not reflect what that organization is and the quality of their work. And Susanna, you can, yeah. Yes, I, I guess, uh, again, that goes back to the question, what, what is your goal with the website? Do you want to be informative? Um, yes, and that's fine, have a lot of text. But what I noticed when you look at, uh, about the Institute, and the first section, comes with a lot of um, sentences that uh, our effectiveness can be traced to our outside box thinking. What exactly does that mean? Um, w what is it? These are these sound like standard sentences that almost everybody can 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 say about themselves unless you have specific examples. 
And why not let those examples speak for themselves rather than um, describing it through sentences like this? Uh, just my recommendation is to um, to look at text when it's written, how much information is contained in the text, and is there a way whether I can condense the information somehow or restructure, work with bullet points, work with other, work with graphics to make it more interesting to read. Right. And as we all know, reading on the screen is, takes a lot of time, and people tend to not do it. Right, and Juanita um, just said to clarify, she was wondering, will bullet points be useful and still convey depth? And I think what you're saying is that you can still convey depth, but just um, in a different, that writing for the internet sometimes is a little bit different than writing for a, in a different format. Yes, yeah. it, it all depends on your use. It doesn't mean we need to sort of necessarily replace all the text, but I would think of it in terms of, different levels of detail is that if you've got all this text here, we need to do, uh, I'd say, look at three levels. One, how do you condense that whole page into one sentence that describes what you do? And then look at how can you condense that whole page into a handful of bullet points that really sort of go in, in just a little bit more detail. And then all of the background, you can still have there, but I would suggest putting that either into a separate page or putting like a PDF case study or, or, or a report or something, or so that people that want to look at that detail, people that really want to see all the detail, will read it. But you move it out of the, you get it out of the way. So, so it, rather than just distracting the people that don't want to get all that detail, you can really have that key information there, and then make the other stuff there as a background. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah, what what are the good, three yeah. points? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can go ahead, Susanna. Yeah, I'm just thinking, uh, what are the three points that a first-time user wants to take away from an in introduction page of that website? What are these three points that you really want to get across? And then start from there, and as uh, Steve uh, recommends, and then let other users who are interested in more details choose for themselves that they want to drill down in some sort of fashion through links or uh, additional uh, PDFs. Okay, great. And I think... Um um, I think that we should probably move on to the last uh, website since we only have about 10 minutes left. Um, so again, thank you uh, to the Rio Grande Wildlife, or the Rio Bravo Wildlife Institute for allowing us to look at your website. And uh, Susanna, if you want to give Steve control one last time. Sure. Thank you. Great. So let me just uh, get this up here. Okay. And again, while he's switching over, while he's switching over, I do want to reiterate that if there are any questions that we don't get to, um, uh, you can go ahead and email those to me, and I can forward them to the presenters, and I will be reaching out to you individually as well. Okay, Steve. Great. So, so, uh, so, so this is a really interesting site. I, a couple of comments just off the, off, off the top. One is, I think, the the, the site itself just uh, it, it feels a little bit uh, dated, so I think it could be just generally cleaned up and made a little bit more streamlined, um, and and really just yeah the, the the text and everything kind of really tightened up and, and made in a in, in a more streamlined format I think would be great. But I think one of the the things I really wanted to call out is so good is these uh, these uh, testimonials from some of the volunteers and people that have, that have worked with the organization. These are just great stories. I, I would really look at uh, how could you make this, uh, these stories and these people that are part of the organization a real focal point for the site because these stories are, are amazing and also the fact that since you've got people volunteering since 2003, since 2005, these stories are just great and I'd encourage people to, to go onto the website and, and read this and I know it's difficult while, while I'm scrolling through. But you've got a really great resource here that I would love to see really at the home page here that talks about what, what the organization is doing and what impact that, that's having on people. So that, that, that's one thing. The, um, the, the, the other thing that, that I would look at is around looking at the, the tone. So when I see here, what's your wildlife concern, and I have intruder, excluder, this feels, I don't really have concerns about wildlife, but I have interest in wildlife or curiosities or things that I'm things that I want to find out more about. So maybe rather than being what's your wildlife concern, it's more like 
sort of understanding or some of those kind of things. So that that that, that would be a, a, a one thing I think we, we could definitely take a look at. The other one, in terms of the navigation structure, it, it's really not obvious when you click on this on, on on the rabbit what's actually underneath in terms of all these different items. So there may be a way to highlight and and, and more more in more depth describe what's going to happen when you click on these because it's not obvious whether here I'm going to find information about rabbits as animals, like rabbits specifically, or mammals in general, or like what, what am I going to find uh, in, in here. So maybe more clearly labeled, what labels sort of what some of those things are and group them uh, thematically uh, could be an interesting one. Uh, the other thing that I think that I would highlight around is that let's say we've got the, the donate here, which is good. That, that, and be clear on once again, what are we really looking for? Are we looking for volunteers? Are we looking for, for, for people to donate? Or are we actually looking for a change in behavior? Are we actually looking for people to do something differently? And being clear on that. And I guess the, the last thing that I would sort of focus on is, um, or, or sorry, two, two more things. This is an interesting one here around wild speak, this, this engagement with the community. And this, this combined with the, the people part, could be a really great way to, to, to help sort of bring that real community connection as a big part of, of the organization of the website. That, that could be great. But, but the, the final piece that I wanted to, to, to just sort of raise the question was around the content that's there is, is to start to understand why, what, what, what's unique about this information here? Like, for example, the sticker injured bird information or some of these things. Is this, is this unique information? Is this information that I could all also get on Wikipedia, is this really, or, or is this really unique to what the DFW Wildlife uh, Co Coalition is doing, in, in which case it really becomes very valuable. Um, and so how can, if, if it is unique, then I think that will be something that could be really highlighted on the, on the website here, that this is, and it could become like the place to go for understanding how to deal with some of these, with some of these issues and learn more uh, about uh, wildlife in that in that urban context, or um, it, or, or sort of how, however we're phrasing that, but to really focus on what is unique and different about this site than other information that might be available on the web. So those, those were some of the comments that I had. Uh, um, that's just Anna. Did you have uh, other feedback you wanted to uh, uh, mention? Suzanne, are you there? Do you still have Anna? Yeah. Sorry, I was on mute for a short while. Uh, <laughs> no problem. Yes, I do, I do have uh, some feedback on the how to support website. What I noticed is the information is, again, very wordy, lots of words. But really, what you there's three information that I can get out of it is I would like to give, I would like to give money, or I want to volunteer. So these are two things I can do. And from there, I can give, donate electronically, or even through cash. Or I can actually buy buy something, do shopping, and then donate through it. So I would restructure that information to make it easier for the user to grasp what what all the information on this website in just a few seconds. Whereas if I look at it from now, it takes me a few minutes to understand all the possibilities that I have to support this organization. So again, looking at I, I what the what, what, what follow up on that is that mm -hmm. also the, thinking about the concept of above and below the fold which is kind of strange to apply to, to websites that really comes from the newspaper industry where people often don't read what's below the fold in, in the page. So here we're, we have these pieces, but we actually have to scroll down to see the shop for a cause section. Mm -hmm. So thinking about how you can make sure that the, the, the things you want people to see are visible right away without, without making them scroll down. Yes. And the other thing is um, I think it, it also goes about the font, the very first page, the home page, is all in italics. The question is, why italics? Is that quoted from somewhere? Can that not be normal font? You know, we've, we've actually had a, at least a couple of comments about font in general and about the fact that it is difficult to read in font or to read in italics. Um, is there a specific uh, font that you think is um, more readable on the internet? I know Nancy said that um, two of the websites 
have used a serif typeface and two used sans serif, and her understanding is that on the web, a sans serif is the approved font, but she actually finds serif fonts easier to use. So I don't know if either of you have a recommendation on that. I, I, I don't think I have enough qualification to make a recommendation on what the, what the best font is to use, but, but I do know that there are lots of resources available that would be able to give, give that advice. But um, yeah, I mean, making sure it's easy to read and, and also being consistent with your design is important. OK, great. Yes, I'm not an expert on this, but I'm sure that there are resources that tell you what is the most readable font in the internet. And I just Googled it. It says Times New Roman or Verdana um, 12 point. Uh, I, I'm sure that information can be uh, um, uh, retrieved somewhere. Right. And, and just, to, just to throw this out there, there have been a couple of participants that have uh, chatted in saying that they have heard that sans serif font has been uh, considered more readable on the web. So just for what that's worth, worth as well. Um, let me take a look at what other questions have come in, because we do just have a minute or so to go. Um, and if anybody does need to leave, please uh, know that we will have a recording of this available within a week, and make sure to fill out that event survey that pops up. Uh, one question that came up that says, scrolling down bothers um, this participant's hand and shoulder because of nerve damage. So do you have suggestions for designing for the screen so that chunks of information are visible on the screen without scrolling? Well, uh, yeah, I think one, one way to do that is you can look at, for example, using uh, tabular structures. This is actually something that I like. So for example, here we've got uh, make electronic donation, make a cast donation, volunteer with us, and shop for a cause. It's four different categories. You can imagine that we've actually got a lot of white space over here on this side. We've got a lot of white space over here on this side. You could have like a two by two matrix that had make an electronic donation, cast donation, volunteer with us, and and, and shop, uh, and, and use that to, to organize the information up top. The, the other way is to really be quite clear on how much information is really required. So here we've got one, two, three. We've got four paragraphs of text describing this shop for a cause concept. Is this, it, it, are all four paragraphs really required? Could we strip that down? And that's really, I mean, in, in general, like there's also lots of great resources online about, about writing for the web. But we really need to be really sort of stripping that down and really just focusing on what's the critical most important. So, so that question, just, just reducing the amount of text overall on the site. Uh, could really help with that scrolling issue. Great. And I think with that, we are pretty much out of time. I do want to thank um, this last uh, website, the DFW Wildlife Coalition. So Kathy, thank you very much for allowing us to take a look at your site. Um, and again, thank you to all the organizations that volunteered their websites to take, for us to take a look at it today. Um, I'm going to take the control yeah, back. I, I would really like to echo that, uh, Kyle. I mean, I know how much work it is to put together these websites, and I know how important it is for you, and, and I really appreciate you uh, putting yourselves up to be able to uh, to, to get that feedback. Uh, I re really appreciate that, and, and appreciate the, the, the time everyone took today to hear that, those comments. Exactly. Um, let me go ahead and get through this to the end. Um, yeah, and again, Steve and Susanna, thank you both so much for being uh, uh, willing and able to talk a little bit with us about these websites. Um, if anybody does have any additional questions that they would like to ask, uh, they can go to our forum at uh, this bit.ly site that I have up here on the screen, which is bit.ly forward slash evaluations websites forum. And if you have any solutions to any of the uh, issues that we've talked about today, it would be a good place to put those solutions there as well. And again, you can go ahead and email me at khunt at techsoupglobal.org. Um, I just do want to take just a moment to thank, again, Stephen, Susanna, and um, all of the people at SAP. That bit.ly link that you see right there goes to the SAP uh, donor page from TechSoup. So go ahead, take a look at them. They're a great donor partner for TechSoup. And thank you to our webinar sponsor, Citrix Online. They do provide GoToWebinar access for TechSoup Global, and we do have a donor partnership with them as well. 
And just one moment, a little bit about who TechSoup, TechSoup is. Again, we are a nonprofit just like the majority of you out there. We do try to provide technology and technology resources to nonprofits and libraries. Some of those resources, of course, can be found on the TechSoup.org website. You can go to the Learning Center to read articles. You can go to the community or blog link to, to read information that way and to take part in our community. You can go ahead and take part of our product donation program. And you can subscribe to Buy the Cup or New Pro Product Donation Alert, two great newsletters. And just one moment um, of your time to talk a little bit about some upcoming webinars that we have coming up. On December 1st, we have Legislative Matching with the Cicero API, and that's going to be on December 1st at 11 a.m. Pacific Time. And on December 8th, we will have Training an Invisible Audience Delivering Effective Webinars. And I will actually be one of the main presenters for that webinar, along with Stephanie Gerding. So we hope to see you there. And again, thank everybody for attending today's session. If you need to leave at this time, you can go up to File, Exit, Leave Webinar, and please take just one moment to uh, fill out the survey that pops up. This does help us in creating better webinars. And if there are any questions that you still have, again, I will be reaching out to you specifically. So thank you, every, everybody. Thank you, all the organizations. And thank you to Steve and Susanna. And thank you, Kevin. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.